My name is Patrick Millian, and I'll be reading two poems. The first is titled Story of the Eye. I come from a long line of women who pick the wrong men. I come from a long line of the wrong men. Ones who mastered the raw work of declarative sentences, like you can't trust the pictures or I can feel you moving. When I tell my aunt this, she cracks open a laugh like mine, backward and dissonant. All she's mastered is the hip swivel twist of her teenaged self, how to unhook her halves while smoking a Marlboro at the same time. We come back like dance crazes. Our reincarnation isn't a body, but needs the body. When I didn't tell any of this to the man who held me against him, it was because I was listening to him talk about his work managing an eye bank, keeping track of sclera and corneas and lenses sliced from the dead and floating in jars, silky balls and clear, careful water. Some realisms are fraught with background, but that was said with a war on, and the man who trilled his fingers over my skin had eyes dark as soil. Some worlds you drown in, and some you dig into. My aunt picks a fleck of tobacco from her graying gums. She can't afford dentures because her husband spent all the money on naturopathic cures for his cancer. Outside, the war we're fighting weighs sludgy in the country's bowels. Is it any wonder that men who are strangers to one another like to keep it that way, even after they've made what love they're capable of? A blind oracle will tell you how to start, but never how to finish. Tattooed across his back, the man with all the eyes carried the words of a fortune teller he met in St. Petersburg. He told me the Russian translates to, One wing, one leg. We return, but can never touch down. The next poem I'll read is titled An Unquiet Symptom. The title comes from an epigraph from Thomas Brown's medical treatise published in 1690. It reads, Wherein they critically break out with harsh hairs on their backs, which takes off the unquiet symptoms of the disease and delivers them from coughs and convulsions. It makes sense to me to taxonomize pain by how you hear it. Some hurt pushes out of the body cacophonously, sounds of expulsion, like lungs blowing out fluid or a brain hot with throb letting loose a moan that carries some out on its back. But it's quiet as a night full of thieves when you hear my breath is labored, or I'm being watched by the dishwasher, or the test came back positive. Another question of semiotics, like how we trust a photograph more than a painting, the reality of both the light and the eyes squinting to keep the light out. Here, you can even witness the perpetrator making furtive gestures. They caught it on camera when the museum visitor went berserk on a painting. First, she clawed at it. Next, she took off her clothes and rubbed her body all over it, almost as if she was trying to get inside the wall-sized canvas. Reports indicate she then peed on the floor, staining the $30 million work. I think of that splatter, the sputtering sound it must have made as she left a bright trace of herself when I find her mugshot online. There's a huge, gleaming diamond tattooed on her throat. The pain of the needle that worked over her voice box has fallen almost silent.